What up? This is Ramash Kring covering Movies, TV, and Entertainment, and here's my review of Netflix's new documentary series, Pepsi. Where's my jet? Hey, before you watch my review, please subscribe to my channel, press that like button, ring that bell, so you can get notified whenever I post new videos. Let's rock this. Ah, yes, another David vs. Goliath documentary. We love those types, don't we? And this one is totally bonkers, especially for those of us who did grow up in the 90s. Pepsi Where's My Jet is part nostalgia, it's part celebration of the maverick spirit, and it's part a case study of what not to do in the advertising world. But if you think that I will easily side with the kid here, John Leonard, well, not quite. I think there's plenty of blame to go around between both sides, and there's also plenty about both of them that are worth admiring, believe it or not. But first, bird's eye view. Pepsi Where's My Jet is hilarious. It's dynamic. It's very entertaining. Probably the most amusing docu-series I've seen all year. But underneath all that is also an indictment of the fact that unfortunately, our country and our world are run by corporations that have the justice system in their pocket. Directed and executive produced by Andrew Renzi. In Pepsi Where's My Jet, the year was 1996 and the cola wars were raging. Despite Pepsi's celeb-soaked advertisements, Coke still held the bigger market share, so the second place brand decided to roll out their biggest campaign ever called Pepsi Stuff. It featured a soon-to-be infamous commercial implying that if you just bought enough of their products, you could use Pepsi points to purchase sunglasses, leather jackets, and maybe a Harrier jet? Pepsi executives assumed that the astronomical price of the military plane was set high enough to indicate it was a joke, but college student John Leonard saw it as a challenge and decided to call their bluff. Enlisting the help and funding of mountaineering buddy Todd Hoffman, Leonard hashed out a plan to score the grandest prize of all, even if it never existed in the first place. Shot in rollicking, irreverent style and soaked in the music and culture in the mid-90s, Pepsi Where's My Jet sits down with Leonard, Hoffman, the commercial's creative team, and a truly unexpected cast of public figures to tell the legendary tale of the kid who sued Pepsi for a fighter jet and became the hero of a new generation. So, there are a total of four episodes, each runs about 45 to 50 minutes long. And throughout these episodes, the one common characteristic that all of them have is that the talking heads would do that classic taste challenge where they would have to guess if what they're drinking is either Coca-Cola or Pepsi. I mean, the taste challenge was a big deal back then. This was the equivalence of today's social media viral challenges. Way before internet was a thing, commercials on televisions completely dictated trends and consumerism. Now, one of the talking heads on this docuseries is one of my all-time favorite supermodels, Cindy Crawford, who still looks graceful and sexy at her age. She only shows up for a couple of episodes to give you a context of not just her famous Pepsi commercial, but also of the atmosphere of the Cola Wars at that time. So the first episode focuses on John's young life when he first sees the commercial and how he gets his best friend Todd to join in on his crazy plan. The second episode is them putting together and executing said plan, catching the attention of Pepsi and their legal team. The third episode is when John brings in the big gun, self-centered lawyer Michael Avenatti, who is currently on house arrest. That part right there takes me by surprise because I did not know that that sleazy bastard was involved in all of this. But that's also part of the appeal of this entire docu-series. The way that director Andrew Renzi structures it is like a game of guess who's behind door number one, and now guess who's behind door number two, and so on and so forth. The circle of eccentric people just gets bigger and bigger with every passing episode, and it's absolutely bananas. The reenactments of the 90s are pretty awesome because they're so snappy, and the editing for the going back and forth is so smooth and seamless. And I love how the actors who play the 90s version of these people 
are very committed and passionate. So finally, here's the point that I was trying to make earlier. Yes, it's terrible what Pepsi did with their false advertising. It's so dumb on their part to not put a fine print disclaimer. At the same time though, the contests and the giveaways were great marketing in my book. People love free stuff, but what people don't love is being lied to. So there are aspects about this docu that do highlight the geniuses of Pepsi advertising folks with their creativity and ability to think outside the box, but their blunders are exposed just as much. On the other hand, you have John and Todd. You are right to root for the underdog. They are the underdog in this scenario. And everybody loves the little guy sticking it to the man. But at the same time, what the hell are you doing, John? If I were John, I would have settled and taken the payment and gone out of town. I mean, the cost of maintaining a jet plane alone is not worth it. That is, if they ever gave you the jet plane. But hey, I understand. They're stubborn. They're determined. Unfortunately, we live under a corporate rule. So the odds of winning cases like this are slim to none. And I bet you even John and Todd probably knew that too. So what is the point of this entire docu-series? Nothing really, other than to remind today's generation that at one point in our country's history, one man, or should I say two men, tried to hold a corporation's promise accountable. Now, which side you end up agreeing with, it's up to you. But you'll definitely get a kick out of watching Pepsi Where's My Jet.